Intrastate battle here at the Bob Devaney Sports Center between Creighton and Nebraska. Let's check out today's starting lineups powered by Unleaded 88. And we'll begin with the 18th ranked Creighton Blue Jays. They come in 16th ranked. They come in at 5-1 and one on the season. Big news here, Nora Sis not in the starting lineup. Destiny Dadam Simpson getting her first start of her career. Kendra Waite, though, really leads this show. Setter Kendra Waite, a two-time All-American. Head coach Kirsten Booth says she is not only an incredible athlete, but she might be the best athlete in Creighton athletics history in any sport. She does a great job disguising her sets, and she can get anyone the ball at any time. Well, it is a young starting lineup for Nebraska. 70% of their kills are from new players this year. Andy Jackson, Merritt Beeson, new to the lineup, along with Bergen Riley and Laney Choboy. Outside Harper Murray doing a fantastic job for this Nebraska team. A freshman leading in kills for a top five team. That is something that doesn't go unnoticed. She is crushing it for this Nebraska team, and they really rely on her in that position, playing all the way around. 24th season for the head coach of the Nebraska Cornhuskers, John Cook, his 30th season overall on the bench. Of course, he started at Wisconsin, 24th year here at Nebraska. A record at Nebraska of 6-6-2-1 and 98, 87% winning percentage for John Cook. On the other bench, a remarkable program builder in Kirsten Berndahl Booth, her 21st season her record 446 and 185, also above a 70% winning percentage for the Jays. Another sold out house here at the Devaney Sports Center, 8,000 plus. And the attendance records just keep falling for this Nebraska crowd. They're back to the Raptors again tonight, Emily. Got another oh, two or 300 standing room only at the top of the arena. Little Red ready to go for an interstate battle between 16th ranked Creighton and number four, Nebraska. This will clearly be the toughest test of the season for Nebraska. They have not dropped a set yet this season. The only program in the country right now to have not dropped a single set. Well, Nebraska hasn't dropped a single set and has swept each opponent. This is their first tough test. It's their first ranked matchup. It's their first game that really means a lot more for this team. So we'll see how they do on a bigger stage playing a tougher opponent. And meanwhile, Creighton on the road against a Big Ten team for the second time this year. Of course, they went to Holloway Gymnasium, knocked off Purdue in three. A very talented but also young Purdue squad. So Bergen Riley starts it off here in Lincoln. Great up by Lexi Rodriguez. Good block touch there by the Jays. Wait on the dump. And Kinder Wait, who is hitting 319 and averages better than a kill per set, starts off the scoring for the Jays. Kendra Wait does it all. She is not only a fantastic setter who does a great job disguising her sets and spreading it out, she makes sure she's involved in that offense and defensively. She's one of their best blockers and backcourt defenders. Pushes out. First swing by Mary Beeson, and Beeson finds the floor. Nebraska, a team that does such a great job, not only in system getting kills, but especially out of system. Setter Bergen Riley does a great job getting her feet to the ball and sending it all the way outside, pushing that ball out for her outside hitters. Tough serve by Harper Murray. Bump set from Waite. A system to Krause off the top of the block. From the back row, the swing is wide by Ava Martin. Point for the Huskers. Friends going to continue to find different ways to spread out their offense, whether it's running their middle on a slide attack with the outside set or bringing Ava Martin from the back row up on a bit to try to spread things out just a little bit more. I think you said it off the top. I mean, Creighton has to get Ava Martin going. Mm -hmm. When she has more than eight kills, Creighton in a career is 18 and two and a big swing from that left pin. That's Destiny Dadam Simpson getting her first start as a Creighton Blue Jay. Dadam Simpson has been playing on the other side on that opposite pin for the last few games, but this is her first time really getting that start, and especially on the outside in a new position. She'll have to step up tonight. Kirsten Berthal Booth says 
She is a freakish athlete, hits the ball extremely hard. You just don't always know where it's going with Nadam Simpson. There's a nice swing and a kill by Krause. Nebraska handling this pass well. You can't serve Lexi Rodriguez the ball because this is exactly what happens. The middle blocker has to stay with Nebraska's, opening up a one-on-one -on -one situation on the outside for Krause to go to town. See her numbers from this matchup last year, 16 kills. It was second on the team at the time for the Huskers. Point for Nebraska. One key that Coach Booth said they were going to do was still try to attack hands because that's one of the strengths of this team. But against a Nebraska block that is leading the nation in blocks per set, it's going to be a question of can they tool them, but can they really get it past that big block? Tried to play it out of the net. Andy Jackson could not keep it alive. Point for the Jays. And now back to serve goes Destiny to Don Simpson. And Omaha Westside played in a state championship volleyball match 10 months ago in this building. Serve long. And Dom Simpson has been playing around with her serve a bit. Earlier today during serving pass, she was throwing a topspin serve in, wasn't too consistent with it, so she went back to that jump float to find a little bit more consistency from the back line. Wait out to the pin, off the top of the block goes Martin. From the back row, Beeson. Good one handed up by Beeson. Grimace in the middle for the Jays. Point for Nebraska as it does not clear the net. Killing a ball on Nebraska's side is so difficult because even when they're hitting the ball away from Lexi Rodriguez, one of the best liberos in the country, the rest of the backcourt is able to step up and get those ups. Into the net. Point. Okay. Every coach talks about the importance of serve and pass, but Coach Booth was stressing that was the mo single most important thing they had to do today. They had to pass well in order to spread the offense out and try to get these blockers to move a little bit more. They also have to find a way to get Nebraska out of system because when they're in system, they're one of the toughest teams in the country to stop. From off the net, that was Krause. Into the block, Bicklemeyer with the kill. Lily Bicklemeyer transfer from Rice. Remus with the serve. They will say there was a touch. Rousey with the kill. One of the things that Nebraska's really been focusing on is getting Krause and Beeson going. They've both been struggling a bit from the outside. One thing that Coach Sean Cook was looking at, especially for that second outside position, it was a debate between Lindsey Krause or Allie Batenhorst. He just wanted someone who was going to kill the ball more. And Krause has stepped up. She's been the person who's putting balls down. On the slide, the swing, no touches wide. On these slide attacks, it's something Creighton loves to use with both middles. Whether it's the M1 or the M2, that's something Nebraska has to shut down early. And the block did a great job setting up to force her to hit it out of bounds. Go, go, go. Great hustle by Waite to get to that. Harper Murray with the tip. Waite there again. Out of system. Bolton with the set. Did she get a touch? No touch. Ava Martin long and point for the Huskers. Nebraska's doing a great job putting up a disciplined block. Not only are they getting great touches, but they're forcing Creighton's hitters to hit the ball out of bounds to avoid their hands. Another freshman here now in the lineup for Nebraska, Laney Choboy with the serve. That is the sixth attack error early on here on the Jays, and they are hitting negative 200. Watch for Creighton to throw in some off-speed shots, whether it's a tip or a roll shot, just to get the ball on Nebraska's side to make them try to make a play. Get there, AJ, 
This is to McGinn, Bolton with the bump set. And that big block on the right side, there is the freshman with the block. Andy Jackson. When Creighton's out of system, this is what's gonna happen. You have some of the best blockers up front. They're gonna put up an absolute wall against these Creighton attackers. 5-0 run for Nebraska. Jays take a timeout. We will too. 11-5 here in Lincoln. Eleven five here in set number one. Let's take a look at today's State Farm State of Success. We mentioned it earlier, but John Cook's Huskers have won all 15 sets this season. They're the only team currently in the NCAA to not lose a set. Previously it was Princeton. They got swept by Santa Clara 3-0. Nebraska does this where they try to ramp up their play as the preseason non-conference play goes on. They want to ease the players into it just a little bit more before they see teams like Creighton, teams like Stanford, teams like Kentucky, where there's a number next to that name where it's a ranked opponent. And this is a team that has looked dominant so far against, yes, not ranked teams, but they're still taking care of them. Top serve, Choboy gets the ace. First ace of the match for either team. Lanny Chowboy just standing at 5-3. She's able to hit this ball as hard as she can, really drive it back. No spin on that. So difficult to pass if you're in serve receive. It is a 6-0 Nebraska run. Just wide on the serve there by Chowboy. Good decision at the last minute by Ava Martin to let it go. Sydney Breisinger into the game for the Jays. Freshman of Cincinnati, Ohio. Murray, second touch not down from Riley. At the top of the block goes Martin again. Back row, Beeson, nobody up there, and Beeson, a wide open look, terminates. Creighton has to key in on that back row attack. This is something that Nebraska goes to really often, especially if it's an out-of-system play. They're going to go to that backcourt. You cannot give Merritt Beeson an open net because that is exactly what's going to happen. Clean kill on the other side. Maisie Boziger in to serve. Just off the tape. Boziger in with the ace. The sophomore out of Firth, Nebraska. Smart serve by Boziger. When Creighton is in this rotation, rotation four, the setter's up front. It's a stack over to the left. A lot of chaos happening with players shifting and running over. Perfect spot for that serve short. Set from most here. Tom Bernuri swing is wide. The hit is wide. Point Creighton. Error, hitting error by Harper Murray. Those are the arrows that you're also okay with. Harper Murray's coming down, plays that first ball high enough to get back and approach, and just misses a little bit wide. But a nice cut, cut shot, thumb down to that cross court. the block and out and Harper Murray with the kill. Harper Murray putting some heat on that ball. Seeing the block that's right in front of her, that block not pressed over enough. She sees him go high, she's gonna hit it right off the fingertips. I like the decision too by Riley there. Alec going behind, held the middle. That did not clear the net for Nebraska, and now 16-7 is the lead for the Huskers. Creighton, normally a team that averages 15.6 kills per set, which is second in the NCAA, having such a hard time putting down a ball right now. You see the attack errors. They average just 5.2 a set already midway through the first. Eight attack errors on the Jays. One of the things Bernthal Booth talked about was this big block of Nebraska and finding places to get their kills. On the slide, there's Harper Murray with a solo block and shut that down. Nebraska's defense coming alive, getting major pickups. 
tracking this ball so well. Harper Murray sees that slide attacker only can hit down the line. Her body might not be there, but those hands reaching out to get that stuff. Nebraska now up 10 here in set one. Eleven two Nebraska run. We have a ten point advantage. Hey, for a limited time, you can get a one month free trial of a Big Ten Plus Nebraska pass. You can stream exclusive matchups featuring the Huskers and gain access to a twenty four seven Nebraska channel. Just scan the QR code now on the screen, or go to BigTenPlus.com/Nebraska and take advantage of this limited time offer. I've got mine. Do you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, Come yeah. on. <laughs> Not just for Nebraska, but really for every school. It's such a fun place to watch games. There's some really big matchups in there, especially during the season. So we keep up on all of uh, all of the plays. So get your phone out now. Scan that code. Take advantage of the one month free Nebraska monthly school pass. Critton feeling the absence of Norris Sis right now. Nora Sis, that two-time All-American outside, normally averages over four kills per set for this team, out with an injury for the foreseeable future. They're looking to some younger players to really step up. Harper Murray. All the way to the Dom Simpson, Point Nebraska. As a double called on the James. There's Nora Sis. Not only do you miss Sis from an offensive standpoint for this team, but from a leadership standpoint. There's a lot of young players on the court. She's someone that really rallies everyone together and can be that calming presence that they need, especially in situations like this when you're down 10 to your in-state rival hitting negative 250. Second ace by Lady Choboy, third for the Huskers here in set one. Check that that was Bergen Riley. With the ace. Yes, this is also big in the big moments. You go back to the NCAA tournament when she had 30 kills against Auburn. She led Creighton last year in that five-setter against Nebraska. Earlier this year in a tough match against Duke, she led them with 27. She's just always big in the big moments. Always big, always good for a clean kill. So dominant in the backcourt as well. Defensively, from a service team standpoint, they rely on her back there. She gets targeted in service even. She handles it pretty well. And having new players in those positions just adds a layer of instability for that service team and for the offensive production. Day to day with the injury, we're told. Quick run in the middle. There's Becca Alec with the kill. Bergen Riley getting Becca Alec going up front. She's done an incredible job this season blocking that offensive piece with something she said hasn't found that connection just yet. When you have a new setter coming in, that connection can get a little shaken up, but Alec and Riley looking good to start off this one. Off the tape. On the slide. Into the solo block, Lindsey Krause shuts down Remus. Krause shutting it down, tracking this ball so well, mirroring her slide attacker, getting those hands up quick because she knows that Creighton can be so lethal with that arm swing very fast. Remus is so good on the slide too, Emily. She was terrific against Purdue earlier. She hit 500, had six, there she goes again on the slide and that time gets the kill, but she's dynamite on the slide. And so I shut her down there. That's big for Lizzie Krause. It's difficult for any team to shut down Creighton's side, but especially when you have two middles, whether it's the M1 or the M2 with Remus coming in, they slide both attackers, so they don't like to keep their attackers in front. They want to spread things out as much as possible. Rolled into the middle by Krause, and a nice kill by Lindsay. A little off tempo. Krause doing a fantastic job switching up her shots. We've seen her rip a few balls cross court and one down the line. This time disguising this off speed to the last second where she just flicks in a little row shot to the middle of the court. Rodriguez with the serve. Adam Simpson into the block. Andy Jackson. Brayton's having a really difficult time getting past this Nebraska block in every situation, but especially out of system. The middle and the right side are just waiting on this ball, working in unison, going up strong. Nebraska two away from set one here at home. Slide again by Remus, and again, Krause. 
Nebraska is controlling the front court offensively, defensively, doing everything well, looking very locked in, in against their first ranked opponent of the season. An impressive set number one here for the Big Red. Set point. Beeson. Wake goes behind her. Uh, carry there. Yep. And Point Nebraska set Nebraska. It was 6-5 Huskers at one point, and they turned it around and allowed the fewest points in a set this season, and it's coming against a ranked team. It was a question of if Nebraska could show up against a ranked opponent. Clearly, they're not backing down from the challenge, and their block been so big, six already to start this match just in the first set. Whether it's Beeson, whether it's Lindsey Krause on the outside controlling that front court, Nebraska up 1-0 against their in-state rival, Creighton. Nebraska taking that first set 25-9. And their block showed up six already through just the first set, whether it's on that slide or the outside. Nebraska's doing a fantastic job going up in unison, working well together, getting those hands up and pressed over. And it has been an absolute block party. Six already. Creighton only having scored nine points, hitting 290 so far just in this first set, having a really difficult time finding any offensive momentum. How often do you see a team have seven kills, six blocks in a set? It's, it's really difficult when you have a Creighton team that makes 13 attacking errors. You wonder if they're going to come out in this second set making some offensive changes because they need some momentum right now. And if they can get that off the bench, they have to use it. Well, you see the number there. Never in the John Cook era has a Nebraska team held five straight opponents under 100 hitting. They've done that through the first uh, five and now an opportunity as Creighton is hitting negative 290 in set one. Two hits called on the Jays. So far, no changes to Creighton's lineup. Still the same attackers in so far. See if they do a better job staying in system at a bit higher clip, trying to spread that offense out, maybe attacking hands just a little bit less. And the slide off the top, Keanu Schmidt, not down. Run the quick in the middle. Great up. Bryson in the back row to keep it alive. One on one, Beeson gets the kill. Nebraska's finding themselves in a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations because Bergen Rally's doing a great job spreading this offense out, moving it against the play of the game. When she's moving forward, she'll send it backward. If she's moving back, she'll push it all the way outside, making those Creighton blockers really work to move side to side. Great battle between the freshman Bergen Riley, Kennedy Orr, in the preseason to see who would get the starting job. Or so much more improved over the last couple of years, coming off two different knee surgeries. She worked extremely hard. It was a battle between those two that eventually was won by Riley. Coach Cook said up until the first game of the season, they were neck and neck. Bergen just having a slight edge in terms of consistency. And that's one thing that he's really worked on with Kennedy Moore, is just being more consistent in her sets, not making as many errors. That's one thing that he loved about Bergen Riley. She doesn't make any errors as a setter. Just the second ever freshman to start at setter for Nebraska. The first was Nicklin Hames, who's on the Nebraska bench as a graduate assistant. And the Huskers picking up where they left off in set one, continuing that run. They are now on a 23-4 to four run. And Simpson with a little pace off the block. Those roll shots are exactly what Creighton needs to do. It doesn't always have to be the hard kill shot, whether it's in the seam cross court down the line. Sometimes just a little bit of finesse can do it. Here's Ellie Bolton out of serve. Solo block, Kendra Waite on Beeson. 
huge read from Kendra Waite up front. She knows this is a one-on-one -on -one situation. She has no help from her middle hitter, so she dives those hands back inside, taking away that cross-court angle. Waite is such a phenomenal athlete. Her dad was a coach. Sister Cassie was built the 12 libero of the year at Kansas. Simpson three straight here for Creighton. Adam Simpson taking a little bit of speed off of these hits, just trying to get the ball on the other side of the court. Also attacking the edges of the block, which is so important, because you cannot go right down into this Nebraska front line. Otherwise, it'll result in a lot of stuffs. Go back to Kendra Wade and what a phenomenal athlete she is for Creighton. She won in one day, within three hours, the 100, the shot put, the long jump, and the pull ball in the state track. It's, it's not even like it's a 100, 200, four by one and something else. These are events that are so completely different. As a track athlete myself, I can't even imagine winning one of those in state, let alone four different events, throwing in a, a throwing event as well in there. So insane, and it's no reason why Kirsten Ruth called her the best athlete in Creighton Athletics history, not just for volleyball, but in general, just a major athlete for this team and really the anchor of the volleyball program. Those four titles that she won in three hours, part of eight total state track titles in her career. And also the highest ranked recruit ever in court history. Boy, Becca Alec in the middle. Bergen Riley has done a great job tonight getting Becca Alec going out of the middle. This was something they've been working really hard on, moving her around the front line, not just keeping her in front, putting those back ones in, getting her going on the slide. That connection looks a little bit more shirt up. Casey covers the tip. A good decision by Waite. As he pulled inside, rolls it over. Quick tipper out to Madame Simpson and a great set by Waite. Kendra Waite working so hard on Creighton's side to get her hitters a ball that they want. And Dom Simpson in this situation doesn't even get a full approach and just knows she has to take a rip at this ball to try to get it past the block. Fantastic adjustment on the outside. Seven five here in set two. Creighton hitting a much better clip here in this set, 222 versus the negative 290 in set one. and just hangs and then takes it cross court. That was one of the smartest plays that I've seen Bergen Riley make. She sees there's so much chaos happening on the right side of Creighton's court, knowing that that slide is going to be wide open in a one-on-one. -on -one. Great decision making from a high IQ freshman setter. Hey, Set right back to Ava Martin, and Ava Martin with the kill. That's the first kill for Ava Martin. Both of Creighton's outsides coming a little bit more alive. Kendra Waite putting them in good situations so they're able to attack not just the edges of the block, but this time get around it. She's keeping the ball off the net just a little bit more to give them better angles to hit off. Slide again and again. Almost in front of the 10-foot line of the kill by AJ. Andy Jackson uploading up front. She barely gets an approach into it, just looks leisurely in. And then that snap down, one of the hardest in the Big Ten. Merritt Beeson covers her mouth because she cannot believe it. <laughs> Free ball, good opportunity here for the Jays. They'll run a quick middle. Bolton with a nice save. Quick reaction. Kiara Reinhardt for the Jays gets the kill. 
some good defensive effort on Creighton's side. Defense turning into offense. Just that slight up when they're able to get plays in the middle of the court. Kendraway can turn it, get her hitter a good ball to try to put over the net. Andy Jackson with another kill. That is three for the freshman. Andy Jackson really getting going on that slide attack. Morgan Riley disguising it so well. She always looks like she's going to set this ball in the same spot every time, whether it's an outside set or a back slide. Taking the ball from the same spot right on her forehead and just flicks it back with her fingertips, making it so difficult to defend because you have no idea where it's going. Great dump there by Kendra Waite. Kendra Waite needs to continue to get offensive up front and throw a few more dumps, and this one disguised so well. She goes up, looks like she's going to set it at the last second, takes that hand, sends it backwards. Harper Murray off the block and another kill. Harper Murray going pass to attack. So fluid in her movements. Every time she takes that first pass and serve receive, she looks so great coming in, strong approach, and finishes that hit off. Tough serve by Riley. Out of system, Bolton with the set to the Dom Simpson, who was trapped a bit. Great swing by Merritt Beeson. Cross body, good angle. Beeson hitting some flashy shots on the right side, cutting this one cross court. So difficult to do as a right handed opposite. Watch her hand, she follows all the way across her body, allowing her to hit that sharp cross court shot. Beeson, the transfer out of Florida in her first year at Nebraska, already a team captain. Florida, my man. Knock off Penn State. Knocked off number two Stanford, number five Minnesota, all sweeps. I mean, you want to talk about a potential number one team. How about not looking forward to that battle between Florida and Wisconsin late, later in September? Florida looking really good. Got a lot of young bucks on that team mm -hmm. that are really stepping up to lead them. Becca Alec again, and you're right, that connection looks so much better tonight than it has. That's been key for this Nebraska team to get their middles going, especially Becca Alec, a little bit more offensively. They look so fluid, and the adjustment that Bergen Riley has made in setting Becca Alec versus Andy Jackson has looked incredible. Pushes out to the pin, to Adam Simpson off the block. Beeson again with the tip. Great hustle by Waite. Tom Simpson into the block. Good coverage by Bolton. Now back row Martin with the roll shot. And you see Krause is done. And then Becca Alec closes it out. Alec with her fourth kill of the match. Here in set two, rallies extending, getting longer and longer. Defensive plays on both sides, keeping both teams in it. One thing you really want to try to do in these transition plays is get the middles involved because the other team is working so hard, spreading it out side to side. If you're able to throw in that middle, it can become really difficult to defend. Tough serve there by Murray. Right by the end line, free ball over. Still puts Nebraska out of system. Rousey inside with a good swing. Abel Martin is long, no touch. Point for Nebraska, 15-9, Huskers. Nebraska led by opposite Merritt Beeson up front. Five kills already, just through a set and a half, doing a great job, not just from the front row, from the back row, putting in some heat and on that right side, hitting shots that just make your mind explode. Volleyball on the Big Ten Network is powered by Unleaded 88. Engine smart, earth kind. It has been the talk of the sports world over the course of the last week. 
92,003, a new world record for a women's sporting event in attendance. You were part of it. It was remarkable. It was remarkable and really something that feels like for volleyball could only happen here in the state of Nebraska. When you have the support from so many fans, I'm not sure there's another city across the country that could put up 92,000 people in one stadium to watch a volleyball game. But of course, none other, none other than Nebraska. I mean, these fans just eat, sleep, and breathe the sport. How many times have folks talked to you about being part, right? I mean, it's like a nonstop conversation over the course of the week. The coolest thing for me, I think, was seeing volleyball talked about, not just from, you know, the sports stations, but from other stations, you know, Fox, CNN, all these other national news outlets that barely even cover sports, but to have this sporting event be talked about at the same time as, you know, things like the U.S. Open happening, but the lead story was a women's sporting event, and not only just that, but a women's sporting event that was volleyball happening in Nebraska. So cool for this sport, and especially so cool for the sport in this state. It was interesting, I heard a conversation with John Cook, John Baylor, the radio play-by-play uh, -play for the Huskers was talking to him and said, you know, what surprised you? What outreach was most memorable? And he said it was the, the text that he got from Chris McIntosh, the athletic director, there is John Baylor, 30 years doing play-by-play -play for Nebraska, but he was talking with John Cook and Coach Cook said it was a conversation or a text that he got from Chris McIntosh, the athletic director at Wisconsin, who said how much it meant to him personally having a daughter who's going on to play volleyball and what it meant for women's athletics. And it was more about this competition between Nebraska and Wisconsin. It was less about that and more about just what it meant for women's athletics. Not just, you know, what it means for, of course, the state of Nebraska, but like you said, for women's athletics as a whole. I mean, I. My messages on Twitter were flooded with people telling me how much Nebraska volleyball means to them, how much the sport means to them. So to see Nebraska put this on, you know, an event that leads the entire, the world in, in women's sports was just so cool to see and the outreach from people that have no connection to the volleyball community whatsoever was, was such a surprise and, and so exciting for all of us that love this sport and committed our lives to it. AJ again, Andy Jackson with another kill in the middle, that is four. And Nebraska's middles here in set two really coming alive. That's seven kills in the second set after just one in the first. It's easy to be excited about Nebraska volleyball when you have freshmen like Andy Jackson coming in, hitting 444, four blocks already. We've talked about how great she is nationally. I mean, leading the nation in hitting percentage coming into this game. A massive spark for this young team. We talked about young talent, the top outside hitter, the top middle, the top libero in the class, the top setter in the class. Four top players at their position, and John Cook said it's, you know, this is a new group, it's a new era of Nebraska volleyball. May take them a while, but they're on a run right now on top 1911. It might be a new era for the team, but they got players like Lexi Rodriguez <laughs> leading that group, and it's no question now, Nebraska up eight here at timeout. Nineteen eleven here in Lincoln. Huskers on top in set number two. A Saturday, a huge day of football begins with Big Ten tailgate at 10 a.m. Eastern live from Michigan State. Then it's a triple header featuring the Buckeyes, Spartans, Wildcats, Gophers, and the Scarlet Knights. And when the entire day is done, the final drive recaps everything that happened. It's all Saturday, only on the Big Ten Network and on the Fox Sports app. Well, here are the two dominant middles, and they have been dominant here in set number two. Both Andy Jackson and Becca Alec doing a great job on both sides of the ball. Not only just this game, but in every single game that they've played. Alec leading the NCAA in blocks per set. Jackson leading the nation in hit percentage as a freshman. <laughs> Alec also just a sophomore. Two very young players on this young Nebraska team, but they don't look like they're inexperienced. They look like they've been playing this game at a high level for years. Serve long from Merritt Beeson. And Marie Remus now to serve. It's a big match earlier this year for Anne Marie Remus for Creighton. She said her idol in sports has always been Annie Drews. Had an opportunity to play at Purdue in front of Dave Shondell and that team. 
And then you walk away with the surprising sweep on the road. Rousey with the kill. As this season has gone on, Lindsay Rousey has looked more and more confident every single game that she's playing. Now, 12, kill, 12 attempts, five kills already, hitting 333. Looking pretty good so far. And as this season has gone on, more confident, less errors, more kill numbers, doing a great job settling in. Third ace of the match for Lady Choboy and the largest lead of the set for Nebraska. Choboy does such a fantastic job really targeting these passers, but not putting it right on them, trying to move them around, get things in the seams, drop it in front, put it behind, not right on those passers because that makes it a little bit easier to pass. for Nebraska, back row attack call on the Jays. Nebraska! And a timeout taken by Kirsten Bernthal Booth. Later this evening after this match, we have our season debut of At The Net. Here's a quick peek. My most memorable moment would definitely be when we played the Brazilian national team. We were on their military base. It was a great match, it went to five, so it was a very high level match. The volleyball part of it was fun, but just being in their environment was really, really cool. If you watch the Brazilian team, they play volleyball with love and passion. You and I sub in for each other, and when we give a hug, they all give hugs and kisses before the game start. It's just a very passionate country with great rhythm, and volleyball is just a part of that. Yeah, so don't go anywhere after the match. It's coming up behind the scenes of Big Ten Volleyball. You can learn more about the conference's biggest stars at the net, presented by State Farm, coming up next on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Boy, how many times did we see that scene last Wednesday at Memorial Stadium? That was what it was all about, yeah. seeing so many young players that a lot of times they don't get to come to these games. It's so hard to grab a ticket in this place. Yeah, there's, you know, 8,500 of them, but a lot of those younger players don't get to see the Huskers play in person because this ticket is one of the hottest in all of Nebraska. So to be able to go to that game, have so many high school teams there, middle school teams there, club teams there, to watch these players play in person that they idolize, it was so great to see them and, and to have the vision that if you can see it, then you can be it. in there now setting for the Jays. Point there for Nebraska. Chilboy will still serve at 23-12. Audrey Clark is a freshman setter out of Frisco, Texas. Runs the slide. Oh, what a save by Rodriguez. the block again. Defense and more defense from Nebraska. Lexi Rodriguez making plays outside her body. She's always stopped on contact and that results. We get the ball on the other side and let that block go to work, getting her team pumped up. Set point here in the second. And now for the Jays is Kendra Waite. And back to serve, Sydney Breisinger. Second set point for the Huskers. Off the top of the block. Harper Murray with the kill. Oh, 
What a first couple of sets here for Nebraska as they win this 25-13 after taking the first 25-9. The first set was all defense for Nebraska. Six blocks in just the first. Set two was offense. 16 kills, only one error hitting 429. Nebraska now looking dominant on both sides of the ball. Now up 2-0 against their in-state rival. Number 16, Graydon. Volleyball on the Big Ten Network is brought to you by State Farm. Great evening here at the Bob Devaney Sports Center. Nebraska on top of the Great Blue Jays. Two sets to none, winning the last 25-13. Hey, Saturday, you can stream women's volleyball live on Big Ten Plus when the Huskers take on Long Beach State. You can download and subscribe to Big Ten Plus right now. Speaking of Long Beach State, coming in here to the Bob Devaney Sports Center. John Cook's coaching tree includes the Long Beach State coach, Tyler Hildebrand, who was here in two different stints with Nebraska, left and came back. Of course, Craig Skinner, Christy Johnson Lynch, Danny Busboom Kelly leading the Cardinal and Chris Thomas, all part of that coaching tree. It's an impressive tree right there. It's, it's <laughs> so impressive. You look at Craig Skinner winning that 2020 championship, Danny Busboom Kelly with Louisville back-to-back -back national semifinals. Chris Thomas heading to that Final Four in his first year with Illinois. Just such an incredible group of coaches. You have Tyler Hildebrand at Long Beach who beat the number one team in the country Texas. at the time, yeah. Texas, in opening weekend, the reigning national champion. Well, if you want to see that Long Beach shit coming in here this weekend, here's a great opportunity for a limited time. You can get a one-month free trial of a Big Ten Plus Nebraska pass. That'll allow you to stream exclusive matchups, which feature the Huskers, 24-7 access to a Nebraska channel. Just scan that QR code right there. Grab your phone, scan it now, or you can go to BigTenPlus.com slash Nebraska right now and take advantage of a limited time offer to get the Nebraska channel and a month free of the Big Ten Plus app. If you don't know how to scan it, just open your camera roll, <laughs> point it right at the TV on the scanning thing, and it'll do all the work for you. Tap the link. Yeah, Long Beach State, the only opponent for Nebraska that is not ranked over the course of the next six matches they have, and that's a little bit of a surprise. I know they're two and three, but they opened up with that big win against the Longhorns. One thing Coach Cook likes to do is really ramp up non-conference as play goes on. So they're going to play some not ranked teams in the beginning, as we've seen, and then they'll ramp it up. You see a team like Creighton, you see Kentucky. You throw a Long Beach State team in there that, yes, you're excited to welcome back Tyler Hildebrand, but also this is a team you can't sleep on because they just took down the reigning national champions, and they can be tough. So after this, Long Beach State comes in, and then listen to this run for Nebraska as we start set number three here. They take on number five Stanford on the road. Craig Skinner and Kentucky come in here. They're ranked 19th. Then it's Ohio State, Minnesota, Purdue, all ranked as they get into the Big Ten Conference. It's exactly what you see anytime you run into Big Ten teams. You're going to see a lot of ranked Big numbers teams. next to those names. <laughs> Good reaction to keep it alive. Murray sends it back over. Now Simpson inside, but the swing had heat on it just a little wide. Let's take a look at that schedule. We talked about the only team not currently ranked that Nebraska will face over the next six is Long Beach State on Saturday when Tyler Hildebrand comes back in. But look at that. They go on the road to Palo Alto. Craig Skinner comes in here, and then you're in the Big Ten Conference, and as you said, you're going to see plenty of ranked teams when you hit conference play. Playing tough opponents in non-conference is so important for Big Ten teams because they know it's going to be a gauntlet once you're in the Big Tens. Yes, at any given time, you have six to seven Big Ten teams ranked, but even those bottom teams that are maybe not the top Big Ten teams, they push teams every single year. They're getting better and better. Those middle-of-the-pack teams want nothing more than to take down some of the top ones. So that's why you have to have a tough on conference schedule because you have to prepare for Big Tens that starts just in a few weeks. Kieran Reinhardt with that last kill for the Jays into the match for the first time here in set number three for Nebraska is Maggie Mendelson. He's third Nebraska setter who's in a heated competition. Let's take a look at uh, the top 10 
in the ABCA. Wisconsin at the top of the pack, undefeated. Candy Busboom, her Louisville Cardinal are second. You see Florida, Mary Wise's team, where they have run through a gauntlet to start the season. Wins over, actually sweeps over three top two teams. I think it's Wisconsin going to Gainesville on September 17th. It's a Sunday. That's going to be a heck of a match. Oh, it's going to be good. We'll really see what this Wisconsin team is made of. That'll be their toughest test so far. They're still running that 6 2 system. Still got offensive firepower. It's even sitting on the bench. All Americans coming in. It's a packed team. We'll see what they do against one of the top teams in the country. At a Florida place, it's, it's so difficult to play there against this tough team that has a lot of young firepower, and they're not afraid to take some swings. Nadam Simpson back to serve for the Jays. We have the lead at 4-3 here in the third. Push straight behind, Beeson one-on-one, -on -one, and what a block by Ava Martin. Creighton's starting to come alive here in set three. Yeah, they might be down to nothing, but this is a team that fights till the very end. Even in one-on-ones, they're going to continue to push, just try to get the edge over one of the top teams in the country and in-state rival. This game needs a lot more to them, trying to snap that 21-game win streak. They want to make tonight go as long as humanly possible. This rivalry was one-sided for so many years. The first 14 times they played, it had never gone past four sets. In the last four years, we've had two five-setters, including last year, when Creighton almost pulled off the reverse sweep. Nebraska took sets one and two. Creighton came back, took the next two before Nebraska held on to win at 15-9 in the fifth. Martin again. Big by Rodriguez. Oh, a nice tip. Martin gets pulled inside and goes right on the line with a nice tip. Such a crafty tip from Ava Martin. Coming inside, she knows the blockers stay in. That right back defender stays back for a touch off the block, opening up that zone two right over the blocker's hands. Ellie Bolton to serve. Here's Krause. Lindsey Krause picks up her sixth kill. She does not have a hitting error tonight, hitting over 500. I'm sorry, over 400. Lindsey Krause just looks so comfortable out there. She's taking really confident, aggressive swings, mixing up her shots when she needs to, but doing such a great job controlling that front line and really dominating that outside position. And the ace, there's Choboy again. Choboy having a day from the back line. Her third ace already just this match, putting in such a difficult ball, targeting those seams, making it really difficult on the other side serve receive. Go AJ, go AJ. On the slide, Remus is wide, no touch point, Nebraska. Point, Nebraska! There is Kirsten Bernthal Booth, the head coach of the Jays. There was a touch that time, point for Creighton. Bernthal Booth, three-time national coach of the year. She was an outstanding volleyball player in college. Went to Truman State, was the MIA player of the year. She is still ranked number three all time in assists in Division II. And she wouldn't want me to say how long ago her playing days were, but they were a while ago. <laughs> Tried it again at Ava Martin that time, just a little wide. Yeah, Bertha Booth was quite the athlete in high school. She was ranked nationally in tennis and was a two-time single state champ right here in Lincoln. She played at Lincoln East. Oh, 
just wide. And and Martin wide point trying to shave off an angle, but that looked really close. Ava Martin really trying to go for the edges of that block, trying to go for high fingertips on that one. But Nebraska doing a fantastic job going low and over rather than high, forcing Ava Martin to hit that ball out of bounds. Daisy Bozinger, who will celebrate her 20th birthday tomorrow, into the match with the serve. And again, some heat from Harper. Harper Murray is so dang good. This ball is coming over her shoulder. She's taking a blind swing at this, can't see anything in front of her, just swings hard, swings high. She might be a freshman, but she is so good. Just long for Bosinger. Long point, Creighton. Back serving for the Blue Jays, number eight, Ava Martin. Checking into the game for the Blue Jays, number eight. Ava Martin will now serve for the Jays, down two. tries to tip, and that is one. Did not leave her alone that time. There were two defenders up at the net with Beeson coming out of the back row. Smart adjustment from Creighton, making sure to get two blockers up on Beeson, because that's what happens when you do. She might get a little tentative, try to go for the tip and go out of bounds. That was not a tip from Beeson. Certainly not tentative on that second try, Beeson. She might throw in a tip here or there, but this is what she can do when she feels competent going up. Just an absolute hammer from the back line. Wait, the one-hander. Tipped over by Nadam Simpson. There's Harper Murray, tried line, got the touch. The hit nope, no touch. Point, and point Creighton. for the Jays. Creighton steadily hanging in here, set three, trying to push that fourth set, hoping to get to that fifth set, which is exactly what they did just one year ago. A team that does not back down from the fight, they're going to continue to bring it until point 25. Beeson with the kill, goes off the block and out. Beautiful out of system set from Nebraska, leading the outside attacker. It's so difficult when you're coming from over your shoulder to get that ball in the right spot. That's what makes these Nebraska liberos so great. They're so good at a system, getting their hitters in great situations. Good up by Murray. Nobody there to send it back over. Such an impressive up from Harper Murray in the back row. She can not only hit well, but defensively make an incredible play. She makes sure to be stopped on defense. That's what allows her to make those explosive plays side to side. So by Bracinger. And Beeson had an open look. That block was in a bit. Goes outside of the Dom Simpson and gets the kill. Eric Beeson now leads Nebraska with nine kills. He's in such a crafty player. She can see that block so well, see where they're set up, and go right around it to mix up her shots, taking a little bit of speed off of it. Come on, you two. Finish, AJ. Off the blocking out, and that is the eighth kill for Nadam Simpson, a career high. Nadam Simpson had a slow start as it did this entire Blue Jays team, but as this game has gone on, she's looked more and more comfortable on that outside pin, really using the block well up front. Point, Nebraska! Checking in for the Blue Jays, number three, Scott McCune. Back Scott McCune in the game for the Jays, the sophomore out of Gretna, Nebraska. And Merritt Beeson will serve. Good lead by Waite. A little tight to the block. Three ball opportunity here for the Huskers.
Both teams just scrambling to try to get in system, and neither could do it. Finally, point to the Jays. What Creighton did so well during that rally was really calming the chaos. If there was ever a chaotic play on their side, scrambling, maybe players were out of position, they calmed the ball down, just kept the pressure on Nebraska, trying to force them to make a play. Fulton out of serve. And Fulton with the ace. And we are not at 14. Jay's not going away. Dominant performance in sets one and two, but now even at 14 here in the third. Nebraska taking a little bit longer in that huddle, trying to figure a few things out, pulling Merritt Beeson out of that serve receive, pulling Lindsey Krause back. Kill by Remus. Creighton Blue Jays with the lead here in Lincoln on top 15 14 in set three. Well, you can get post match reaction plus news and highlights on the big show presented by Old National Bank. Tonight at 10.30 Eastern on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Great night to be here. And how about this? Nebraska coming off of a national world record attendance. And tonight, it's a new Devaney Sports Center attendance record, 86-56. The previous record, 86-32. So back-to-back -back times, Nebraska has set an attendance records at home. Nebraska just loves breaking records these <laughs> days. They do such a great job of it. I mean, fans just want to be here. This is such a hot ticket in Lincoln. They've led the nation in attendance since 2013 and have had the longest sellout streak in all of NCAA women's athletics in history. Krause off the top of the block and Krause with the kill. I think I was mentioning to you, Emily, on the way in here tonight, I saw more tailgates and early arrival here tonight than I've seen in a couple of years. It was packed well before outside this arena. Feels like these fans maybe caught the tailgate bug after having <laughs> gone to the Memorial Stadium game, saw that they could have some fun outside before they went in. Got a big parking lot out there, might as well. There's a swing and a kill by Abel Martin. Point, Blue Jays. He's regained it at 16-15. And now for the first time, Creighton in positive numbers in hitting percentage. First time since the second point of the match. After that first set, the team was hitting negative 290, so they've clawed their way out of the hole slowly, but surely. Nebraska out of rotation, point for the Jays. And now late here in the third, Creighton with a two-point advantage. Being out of rotation, just that mental error. You see Coach Cook a little bit frustrated with his team. Difficult to get him to stand up during games, but that's something he'll be frustrated with. Now down two here in the third set. Showboy boy, bump set. Harper Murray, back line. Boy, she was going after that one. Such a smart shot from Harper Murray in a situation where this team needed a kill. Going for that sharp, that cross corner. Deep shot between the back two defenders, the best shot that you can have as an outside hitter in this game. Just get a sense she's one of those players who wants that ball in that moment. Good run, one handed set by Waite, and Rivas put it away. Beautiful set, Kendra Waite coming up. Gets that hand up, but still in the perfect spot for her middle attacker to go up to take a good swing off of it. Amy Martin rotates in the back, she will serve. Remus and Dom Simpson up front for the Jays. There is Murray, tried line. Wide, no touch, the Jays up by three. Creighton is a sneaky team. This is not a team that you want to give just a little bit of momentum to right now. Up three here in set three, they know they can claw their way out of this. They did it last year at the CHI Health Center. Do not want to give them any leeway. 
just long as Choboy ducks out of the way at the last second. Mendelssohn up front along with Harper Murray and Beeson for Nebraska. The Tom Simpson on the overpass. Coach Cook might want to think about taking a timeout right now. Things falling apart that don't normally fall apart on Nebraska's side. Overpasses we rarely see, especially from players like Lexi Rodriguez, who seems just a little bit frustrated with herself. Coming off the rails a little bit for Nebraska. Just settle down, get a good pass, try to get out of it. Beeson, is there a touch? No. And John Cook's going to take a timeout as the Jays have their largest lead of the match at 21-17, late in set number three. One seventeen. The Jays on top here in the third. Trying to start their hopes for a reverse sweep against Nebraska. How about this, Emily? First two sets, the Jays a total of 22. Right now, Kirsten Bernthal Booth squad with 21. The difference for this Creighton team has been their hitting percentage and just efficiency in general. They've only had three errors in this set as opposed to math 18 <laughs> for the rest of the match with this team steadily climbing their way out of a hole getting more and more efficient as this game have gone on and Nebraska's defense not able to adjust to the adjustments that Creighton's making offensively. Well served by Remus back to Murray one on one nice dig Kendra wait. Two players up off the court. Beeson with a beastly swing. Tenth kill for Beeson. Nebraska doesn't back down in these pressure situations. They're not going to tip as it's tight in the game. The Huskers know if they're going to claw their way back and try to get a lead now down three against Creighton, they have to take those big swings and continue to be aggressive. One on one. Got the kill. Kiana Schmidt. First time Schmidt has had multiple kills this season. That was Kiara Reinhardt with the kill. First time she's had multiple kills this year. Bryson is served as well. This is when those 8,600 fans really come alive. When Nebraska's down, when this team wants to get back in the game, they're already up to zero. I think these fans want to go home. They want to see their team clean up and get out of here. So this is when the fans start getting loud. This is when it becomes difficult for Creighton to now capitalize on this opportunity. On the side, the block is there. Andy Jackson. Andy Jackson was huge with the first set. Four blocks for her just in set one. We haven't seen too many more from Nebraska. Just one in the last two sets, but now coming alive when this team needs it most. Now within three, within two of Creighton. Twenty-two twenty in the third. Nebraska trailing the Jays, but leading two sets to none. Coming up. You can go behind the scenes of Big Ten Volleyball and learn more about the conference's biggest stars. At the Net, presented by State Farm, that's coming up next on the Big Ten Network and on the Fox Sports app. Jays would like to push that back. Another 15 to half hour to take this third set and send it to a fourth. And they are just three away. Timeout taken by Kirsten Bernthal Booth. with Lexi Rodriguez back at the service line. Hey, 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 hey,
Simpson got hands. Well, that was a nice pace shot by Adam Simpson. Most of Nadam Simpson's kills have come from these off-speed shots, whether it's dropping in the middle of the court, trying to tool it off the block, or going for that seam one. She's doing such a fantastic job mixing it up and taking some speed off to place it. Double-digit kills for Nadam Simpson for the first time in her career. Upset Krause. And Lindsey Krause. Great angle there, and what a save by Harper Murray. Different players have stepped up for this Nebraska team when they need it most. We've seen Harper Murray make big plays, Merritt Beeson as well. Lindsey Krause up front, not afraid to take those big swings when this team needs to get back in it. Krause hitting 471 of the match. That's eight kills. No hitting errors. Tough serve. Good up. Krause again. Nine kills for Krause. She's hitting right at 500. Back to back, Lindsey Krause bringing the heat. Great push from Bergen Riley, and Lindsey Krause knows in a one-on-one -on -one situation, she can unload on this for this kill. This is reminiscent of the last 12 matches of last season when Krause averaged nearly three kills per set and hit 359 over the last 12. That's in the Big Ten Conference and postseason. Second touch, boy, big shot and timely by Kimber Waite. Risky situation for Kimber Waite to go up front. Seeing those two big blockers in front of them, but she sees them a little more behind her, so she takes it forward. Set point upcoming here for the Jays. Ellie Bolton to serve. Again, Krause with the kill. She's got 10. Krause coming up big for this team, not afraid to take a rip in these big moments, using the block this time, looking unfazed. Second set point upcoming for Creighton. Got it. Ava Martin puts it down. And for the first time this season, the Nebraska Huskers have dropped a set. As Creighton comes from behind and takes set number three, 25-23. Kendra away with a couple of big plays late, including a great push with pace to Ava Martin. We head to the fourth here in Lincoln. Huskers on top, two sets to one. Bit of deja vu for the last two seasons, Nebraska has opened up with 17 straight set wins, only to lose the 18th of their season against Creighton. And if we project that forward, last year Creighton came back and won the fourth set as well and sent it to a deciding fifth set. Trying to do it again here tonight in Lincoln. In these in-state battles, it means more for both teams. This is a great team that, yes, they might be down two to nothing, but they're always going to continue to fight. They're going to keep the pressure on Nebraska. That is exactly what we're seeing tonight. They clawed themselves out of a major hole and are now back in this game, and they looked pretty in control for that third set. Creighton won the third 25-23 by two, very similar to last year. Creighton won it 27-25, extra points in set number three to send it to a fourth. And then, of course, the Jays won that. Nebraska eventually took home the victory in five. Back in for Nebraska is Becca Alec. Mendelssohn played in that third set. Alec back in the middle for the Huskers here in set number four. Ava Martin will open it up to serve. On the back row, Merritt Beeson is dumped by Martin. No, they're going to say it was down. Point for the Huskers. Merritt Beeson has been lethal from the back row. Yes, we know what she can do up front on attack, but they've really established the back row as a threat, as a great option for them, especially in transition. And they can throw it up to her. She puts it down. Pushes behind to the right pin. And Riley does the same and four touches called on Nebraska. Did not hit a Creighton player. 
There's Norisis, who is out with an injury. Out tonight, they say day to day. Creighton has another matchup coming this weekend against another in-state rival in Omaha. Hoping to get Nora back for that. Tough to have her on the bench. You're all American, as there is Becca Alec. Becca Alec really got going offensively for the first two sets of this game. Didn't see much from her during set three, as well as Andy Jackson in the other middle. But Bergen Riley is going to make it a point to establish the middles early on, so it opens things up for other hitters she wants to go to. Lindsay Krause. Back row attack called on the Jays and Krause. Smart decision by Krause up front, knowing that Kendra Waite is back roaming. She can't go up and attack this ball, so Lindsay Krause can be as aggressive as she wants up front. And Adam Simpson to push just long. Looked like it might grab that back corner. Just missed. She's had a nice night for her first start. Destiny to Dom Simpson out of Omaha West Side. Kill by number nine, Kiana Schmidt. Point. Kiana Schmidt with the kill. 6'2 senior middle for the Jays. Kendra Waite also establishing her middles early on in this game. She loves to go to them on that pin, but it's important to also establish them in front so it spread things out just a little bit more. Beeson tried line. Out of system, Rodriguez. First hitting error on Krause. Tough ball to handle up over her shoulder. Not only has Creighton's offense picked up, but their defense has picked up significantly. Ellie Bolton making crazy plays in the backcourt to keep the Blue Jays alive and keep the pressure on Nebraska's side. Point, Nebraska. Back serving for your Huskers, number eight, Lexi Rodriguez. So Rodriguez now back to serve. attack, so it's not quite outside. They bring it in just a little bit more. On these rips, normally that outside's gonna wanna bang that cross court. Merritt Beeson steps in front of it, shuts it down. Now Simpson gets the kill. Touched by Jackson, but fell on Nebraska's side, and now back to Solo. Is Nadam Simpson. 21st ranked recruit last year. Second highest ever recruit for the Blue Jays. The and the service ball, just a few service errors. Checking in for the Blue Jays, number three. Filling in for Nora Sis. For your Huskers, number 13, Merritt, Beeson. And Beeson now back to serve for Nebraska. Kiana Schmidt. Wade's doing a fantastic job really spreading this offense out, not relying on just one hitter, but spreading it out, getting everyone involved, and moving them around along the net. It's the Blue Jays squad that's won nine consecutive Big East Conference championships. And despite winning nine in a row, they're picked to finish second behind Marquette this year. Here's the word probably said, yeah, we'll use that as a little bit of motivation. <laughs> Nine consecutive to one, and we pick the finish number two. And this is a team that dominates the Big East. Yes, Marquette is always a fantastic team, but this great team, they are consistently good year to year. Nebraska currently ranked number four. The best win 
the Jays had ever had on the road was back in 2021, the year in which they went 31 and four, had an RPI of 11. They went on the road and beat Craig Skinner's Kentucky team that at the time was ranked number three in the nation. It was a big win for the Jays program and Kirsten Bernthal Booth. Opportunity here, good tempo. What an up by Rodriguez. And then Murray, coverage by Beeson. Murray, another chance. And they go to the middle, not down. Jay's battling here in this point. And get it! Ava Martin with the kill. Nebraska with some really great pickups, but Creighton able to find a spot on the court that finally falls. And that's difficult to do when people like Lexi Rodriguez make plays like that. They think the ball's down, she comes out of nowhere. But Creighton gets the better of them going back to that 116. This is a defensive battle on both sides. Yeah, you're seeing a lot of scrap right now for these Blue Jays. On the slide is wide and Jackson with the hitting error and the Jays have knotted this at eight on a 3-0 run. Greatest match hitting percentage is up to 077. Remember they hit negative 290 in the first. One focus that Kirsten Booth said coming into this game that was going to be so difficult was just finding spots to score on Nebraska's side. They have one of the best defensive cores in the country, front and back row working so well together. So finding spots where the balls to land is really difficult against a team like this, but they've gotten better at that as the match has gone on. for a kill. Nebraska throwing in overloads with Becca Allen coming in right in the middle in the center. Merritt Beeson right over top of it. It confuses the blockers up front. They have to go up with Becca Alec thinking the ball's going there. You bring Beeson out of the back row, that's an open net. It's a great tandem right there. Upset by weight to the pin. That she has this little flex right as the ball is coming over just to shut it right back down. Basically vertical on the other side. After the 3-0 run by the Jays, Nebraska responds with a 3-0 run and Merritt Beeson with it. Oh my goodness. and found him a smart swing there for Martin. Perfect out of system set from Creighton. Putting it high and tight. That is exactly what you want to have the angles to hit off the block, maybe go cross court, but a beautiful out of system set. Back in to Dom Simpson for the Jays. Martin back to serve. Nebraska in system, goes back row to Beeson. These two passes really tight for Nebraska. This has not gotten a good first touch, and that swing wide. Gives the Huskers the point. Back to the Huskers number two, Bergen Riley. Good first touch to the Jays. No touch point for the Jays. Do we have a touch? 
Oh, I have a signal. And we do. Finally called late. And Jay's coaching staff off the bench. They're going to say a net violation potentially on Creighton. And they will call it. Into the net. Let's look again. On the way down from the block. Looks like, yeah, just that forearm coming down right on it. No part of your hands, body, anything can touch that net. And the ace, Bergen Riley. Her second ace of the match. And Nebraska with five aces on a bit of a run. They're on top by four here in the fourth. Student section fired up here at the Devaney Sports Center, 14-10. Nebraska on a bit of a run. And boy, it has been a defensive battle from two teams that are known for defense. Defense is the name of the game for both Creighton and Nebraska. Creighton doing such a great job in the backcourt controlling the ball, as does Nebraska, but it's their all-around play, holding opponents to 037 coming into this game on the season. They've kept every single opponent hitting under 100. Hoping to make it six in a row under 100 tonight. Jay's right now just under that. The Don Simpson with the tip. Oh, great hustle. Free ball opportunity. Oh, Murray. 4-0 Nebraska run. Nothing like a little free ball kill to get your team pumped up. This ball you do not expect to fall. A miscommunication on Creighton's side. With Kendra Waite coming in, faking out one of her back row players. Nebraska, a lot of momentum right now. Tough serve. In the middle, Remus did not get on top of it, thought there was a touch, and immediately going to the challenge card. Kirsten Bernthal Booth right away went to the challenge card. She saw it. Our first challenge of the night. Boy, that's refreshing. <laughs> Question of whether or not Becca Alec, I believe, touched this ball. Any pinkies bent backward, change of direction on the ball, usually a good indication of a touch. Tough to tell there. And they say a touch. They saw one right away, so that call came in very quickly from our R2. So good challenge by Coach Booth, 15-11. They are not afraid to schedule tough early. You look at their schedule in the non-con, 10 of the 11 teams they're playing were in the postseason last year. Nine of the 11 won 20 or more games. Four won their league as Beeson gets the kill. They will schedule tough. It's helped them too. You know, 12 consecutive NCAA tournaments for the Jays. They've been eliminated though back-to-back -back years in the first round. Unfortunately, key injuries to star players in back-to-back -back years in the first round have cost them. I guess it was second round. Jayla Zimmerman got hurt, but last year, Kendra Waite got hurt. And there's another kill by Beeson, and Nebraska opens it up to a six-point lead. Nebraska starting to run away with things. Things connecting so well on their side, both defensively and offensively. Creighton has to make one final lash push if they want to stay in this ballgame. Served by Murray. Wait, about all she can do is pop it up. Krause was there with the block, but it's wide. And the Jays get the out of system point. Nebraska's Lindsey Krause has hurt her best match of the season. Already Krause with 11 kills, hitting 476. That's her first time in double digit kills this year. Beeson right into the middle, and Beeson beat the block to the wall. Bergen 
Ryan Riley consistently going back to Beeson on that back pin. Beeson's doing such a great job mixing up her shots, seeing the block that's in front of her, and placing them so well. Kill for the Don Simpson. She leads Creighton tonight with 12 kills. Hitting 194. Checking in the serve for Creighton, number 21, Audrey Clark. Audrey Clark back in for the Jays. She stepped in in set number two for a bit to set. Was a freshman out of Frisco, Texas. There and she went to Beeson one on one. Bergen Riley is feeding there at Beeson. Green cannot let her in a one on one situation. That one kind of looking like a none on one. No <laughs> one up in front of her. She's able to just go to hitting lines on that and slam it in the middle of the court. It's a none on you, huh? None on you. Beeson now with 16 kills, 242 hitting percentage. Kendra Waite front row, watch her to take it over on two. That's like you talked to her or something. I, I call you Tony Romo. Look, I was never a setter, but in these situations, when your team is down, you want to take control of the game. She's such an aggressive, competitive player. She wants to get back in it herself. One for Emily Eman. <laughs> Season high, 12 kills for Lindsey Krause. Krause hitting the ball so hard, she almost falls over on it. Watch her after this play. She just unloads in a one-on-one. -on -one. Can't even handle it herself so much heat coming through that arm. 12 kills, 22 swings, one error, hitting right at 500. For the junior out of Papillion. Played for Omaha Scott. Wait now back to serve for the Jays. Back row. Big swing by Beeson. 17 kills for Merritt. Merritt Beeson taking control, whether it's in the front court or the back row. In this rotation, when you have a middle on a slide and an outside coming in, just two hitters, that back row attack is so critical to this team's success. John Cook said earlier this week, really needed to get Krause and Merritt Beeson going, and here we are with Krause with 12, Merritt Beeson with 17, both hitting at a pretty good clip right around Beeson 265, Krause 500. And now 21-16. Back to serve goes Ava Martin. Back to serve number eight, Ava Martin. There's something to watch. Creighton right now hitting 0-99 in the match. There's Harper Murray. She's in double digits. Every player on Nebraska's side just putting a little bit of extra juice in everything here in set four. Makes you wonder what John Cook told them. They've been firing up front. Reinhardt into the block, point for the Huskers. Timeout taken by Bernthal Booth. Huskers two away from winning this in four. It's 23-16 in Lincoln. Don't go anywhere after the match because coming up, you can go behind the scenes of Big Ten Volleyball and learn more about the conference's biggest stars at the net, presented by State Farm coming up next on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. 
23-16 here in the fourth. 2-1 Nebraska lead. Huskers two away from remaining unbeaten on the season. End of the game now for Nebraska. Allie Batenhorst in for the first time tonight. So Batenhorst gets in the right rotation, courtesy of Merrick Beeson. Nope, you're supposed to be over here. Now Simpson in the block. Bump set from off the net, Batenhorst. Beat the block on the kill by Reinhardt. Number five, Gilbert Reinhardt. A bit of confusion on Nebraska's side. Players not knowing exactly where they are, and then broken plays happening. And Creighton just capitalizes on it. Places the ball right in the back corner. Remus back to serve for the Jays. Jays and Berthal Booth is creating out of the timeout with two straight. And a timeout taken timeout. now by John right. Cook. Twenty-three eighteen. now the score. We'll take a quick timeout and be back for the remainder of the fourth. Twenty-three, eighteen in the fourth. Reminder coming up, you can go behind the scenes of Big Ten Volleyball and learn more about the conference's biggest stars. At the Net, presented by State Farm, coming up next on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. So out of the timeout, if Nebraska's in system, you've got options with Baton Horse, Beeson, and Alec. Where are you going? Going to Merritt Beeson. She's been crushing balls left and right. Pulled off a bit. Goes back to Batenhorst, who delivers. Allie Batenhorst, junior out of Houston, Texas, puts Nebraska at match point. And now she'll go back to serve for it. So match point number two upcoming. Rousey with the roll, not down. Madame Simpson with the kill. Net violation called in Nebraska point for the Jays. Brayden continuing to take big swings in big situations, hoping to fend off match point a few more times here. Can Nebraska get it done? And 0 on the season and 22 and 0 all time against the Jays.
Creighton did hit over 100. They hit 109 in the match. So the streak of holding opponents under 100 ends for Nebraska. But the winning streak continues. Didn't start out that way for Creighton. They started this match hitting negative 290, clawed their way back out of it, took that set three, 25-23, we're back in the game. But it was Nebraska's defense and their offense working so well together. Nebraska finished hitting 305 this match, and their defense finishing 10 blocks, six in just the first set alone. Take a look at that final point and the kill out of system for Nebraska. Last few points, a bit chaotic for this Nebraska team, but Alex, such a confident player, goes up, just takes a confident swing right at the back line, exactly what this team needed. I want to welcome in Lindsey Krause, who had her best night of the season, 12 kills, hitting 478. Last year, Lindsey, you had 16 kills against the Jays. What is it about Creighton that brings out the best in you? Um, I think we just talk a lot about being the state champions. That was a big thing that we worked on this week was being the state champions, you know, beating our other Division One rivals. We played UNO last week, and now we play Creighton. And getting those two Ws, I think the in-state rivalry is something that brings out the best in all of us. So I feel like everybody went up a notch tonight. Lindsay, your game certainly has elevated as the season has gone on. How have you been able to elevate your game? I think it's, it's something that just, you know, takes a little time to settle in. I feel like everybody, no matter how old you are, you get a little jittery at the beginning of the season and you get some rough patches and you got to work in and out of, you know, maybe playing, not playing. So I think just taking your time and working and grinding every day in practice and then just taking opportunity when you have it. Lindsay, with five newcomers getting significant playing time on this team, how have they been able to rally together so quickly and this team become a unit so early on in the season? I think having them all come in January was a really big part in that. We've had them here for the last eight months or so, so we've been buying into our values in this program and our culture and being a Nebraska volleyball program. So having them and having the same expectations as we would have a senior, uh, it's been really big for us and really building that team culture all throughout these last eight months or so. Lindsay, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you. Let's take a look at uh, the performance tonight by number 22. 12 kills, just one hitting error, hit 478. Lindsey Krause has been working herself into this starting lineup. Didn't start out that way. Coach has been flipping Lindsey Krause and Allie Batenhorst at that L2 position, but she's earned it with her ability to put balls down and really earn kills for this team. Here's a look at the defense, and Nebraska's pressure continues, holding Creighton tonight to 109. You see two and a half blocks per set. They had six blocks in set number one. Pleased to be joined now by head coach John Cook. Coach, you said you needed more out of your pins, and you get tonight 17 from Beeson, 12 from Krause. She hit 478. Talk about their play. Well, we've been working hard on it, trying to get those guys to kill balls, and uh, I guess it paid off a little bit. Um, but you know, we got a little squirrely there in game three and made too many errors. But again, we're it's a it's a you know, we're trying to develop a rhythm. It's hard, you know, it's hard. The only way you can do it is really play matches and, and figure out that rhythm. At times we were in a great rhythm, and at times we got way out of rhythm. So part of that's passing, ball handling, setting, and again, Creighton, Creighton frustrates you. I mean, they're they're a great defensive team, and uh, you know, at K Kendra, Kendra the setters. I mean, she's she should be a first team All American. I mean, she does amazing mm -hmm. things up there at, at the net and messes with our blockers. She's She's a great setter. Coach, you mentioned Creighton's persistence and not backing down. They took that third set from you after you dominated sets one and set two. What did you tell your team after set three to bounce back in the fourth? <laughs> I told them that, uh, you know, we have to, it's not over yet. And they played like the game was over. And, you know, it's just human nature and we got to learn from that. We've got uh, some players out there that's that, I mean, it's the first set we've lost all year and this is the best team we've played all year and they've got to learn how to grind every point. Well, Coach, you've heard a lot over the course of the last week about the record at Memorial Stadium. You come back tonight and you set a new attendance record here at the Devaney Sports Center, 86-56. Talk about that. Oh, really? Oh, because we added the new seats. Yeah. So, yeah, I saw this. I looked up and saw the stadium <laughs> room only was packed. But this is a Largest crowd a ever here match. at the Devaney Center. Yeah, that's that's awesome. It's uh, 
you know, Creighton's a great team. It's this is a great is becoming a great match. You know, it's a bummer that Sis couldn't play tonight. And uh, but, uh, you know, I think people are really into it. Again, it's just an extended celebration of, of the volleyball in this state. One of our goals was to be the state champs and uh, we got we, we should do it now. Uh, so uh, but, you know, that's where it's that's where it's going to is, you know, winning a state championship in Nebraska is a pretty good accomplishment. John, thanks for joining us. OK, thanks, guys. I want to remind everybody that uh, coming up, go behind the scenes of Big Ten Volleyball. You can learn more about the conference's biggest stars at the net presented by State Farm is coming up next on the Big Ten Network and on the Fox Sports app. That'll do it from the Devaney Sports Center, where Nebraska knocks off Creighton in four. Coming up next, once again, an all-new episode of At the Net presented by State Farm. Behind the scenes look at Big Ten Volleyball stars on and off the court. For Emily Eben and for our entire broadcast crew, thanks so much for joining us. I'm Larry Putney saying good night from Lincoln.